Well, hey guys. In today's video, I'm gonna talk all about caffeine creams. I get a lot of questions about that from you guys and you know how much I love my coffee. So I'm sipping on a cup of the liquid black as we speak, of course. Um, and it's all good. All right, so caffeine, you'll find it most frequently in eye creams, of course, eye patches and cellulite creams, but the fun does not stop there. You will find caffeine in a lot of products. As a matter of fact, when I reviewed La Mer for you guys and I was trying out their products, I seem to recall many of them had caffeine and I believe that might be what is responsible for kind of the short term illusion of skin benefit with that. I think we can all appreciate that the active ingredient in coffee is caffeine, um, but when it comes to skincare, caffeine, when applied to the skin, can actually get into your skin. It's water soluble, and its mechanism of action largely is that it constricts the blood vessels in the skin. One reason that you will find caffeine in many eye creams and eye products is because of this vasoconstrictive action. And so for people who have puffy under eyes that cause dark circles, caffeine in eye products can be transiently beneficial in that it constricts the blood vessels and reduces the puffiness due to swelling. And that swelling over time is what can also cause dark under eye circles for some people. So you might see an improvement in dark under eye circles using a, caf a topical caffeine product around the eyes. However, this will only help if your dark under eye circle issue is due to puffiness and swelling. I have a video all about the different causes of dark under eye circles and you'll recall from that video that one cause is simply genetic and so caffeine is not going to change your DNA, unfortunately. Although sometimes I feel as though it does because when I drink my coffee I feel like I'm a different person. I'm definitely a different person without it. Um, so yeah, maybe it does change your DNA. I'm kidding. All right, so for under eye puffiness, it certainly can help. Unfortunately, a lot of eye creams, as you guys know from watching my videos, can have a ton of irritating ingredients. They're not necessary and they can cause problems for people because the skin around the eyelids is very thin, so stuff gets into the skin there more readily and is therefore more likely to cause problems. But personally, I have been using and rather enjoy these hydrogel eye patches from Derma E. This is not sponsored. Um, I genuinely have been really enjoying using these in the morning. I put them on when I wake up and I do my little blogilates routine and then I take them off. And I don't really have a reason to use these other than I just like that cooling sensation. But I do appreciate a subtle increase in the brightness, luminosity under my eyes when using these. It's very temporary, but maybe the caffeine in this is what is, is uh, you know, maybe that's the explanation for that. And they're really nice if you put them in a refrigerator and apply them on the skin while it's cool. You can really get maximal uh, benefit from them that way for that vasoconstrictive action to really get some good reduction in swelling under the eyes when you first wake up. But other things that will contribute to that as a side note are if you eat a salt heavy meal for dinner, you will have more water retention and worsening of your under eye puffiness in the morning. Also certain medications and changes in hormones. So for women around your menstrual cycle, you may notice that you retain more water and you have more puffy eyes. Topical caffeine can certainly improve redness temporarily, but it's only going to be really useful for just kind of mild redness. If you have rosacea and persistent facial redness, topical caffeine is, is not going to touch that. So don't waste your time. And a theoretical risk with chronic use of topical caffeine is worsening of the redness. This is referred to as rebound redness. The reason this is a concern is because when you chronically clamp down the blood vessels, when you remove that uh, vasoconstrictor, in this case caffeine, the blood vessels become a little bit more, they kind of re rebel and rebound and you get vasodilation, more redness. We see this with a topical rosacea treatment called uh, bromonidine. It is a vasoconstrictor prescribed to temporarily improve redness related to rosacea, it's very strong, but with chronic use, a risk of that medication is rebound worsening of the redness. 
Now topical caffeine is nowhere near as strong a vasoconstrictor as topical prescription bromonidine, but it's a theoretical risk that you could actually have worsening rebound redness if you are chronically using caffeine. Um, but in most products, the, the concentration is very low. So it's a theoretical risk. It's not something that I've actually ever seen before. Um, so be aware of that. Another situation where caffeine pops up all the time is in body creams aimed at firming, specifically those cellulite creams. There actually is a small amount of data looking at topical application of caffeine in a cream for the improvement of cellulite. So this study looked at a 3.5% caffeine cream applied to both the thighs as well as the arms of women and they applied it twice a day for six weeks and at the end of the six weeks there was a decrease in the circumference of the thigh by 0.7 centimeters and of the arm by 0.8 centimeters. However, this study was very small. I think it only had 15 participants. That's hardly anything. And there was no control. So who knows, maybe those people just ended up losing a little bit of water weight and that's what explains that reduction in in circumference, not the cream, the caffeine cream. If you're interested though, the caffeine cream, I've never seen it. It's a Korean cream that they used in the study. Zone 5 Slimming Zone Smart Cellul Cell Silhouette Cream. So I'll say it again. Zone 5 Slimming Zone Smart Silhouette Cream. You can't get that here in the States. I looked online, there's one website I found it on, but I don't know that they deliver here and I have no interest in using it, so I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> but that's just the cream that they used in the study, this Korean caffeine cream. The concentration was 3.5%. Um, so, you know, it's promising in caffeine creams. Personally, as a dermatologist, I don't have a lot of confidence in creams for cellulite. Cellulite can be very stubborn to improve the appearance of, and in my opinion, the best thing that you can do to improve the appearance of cellulite is to build up the muscle groups in your uh, legs or arms, if you have it in your arms, uh, to kind of fill in some of the space there. I have a vid video all about cellulite and cellulite treatments, but to me, I mean, that is one of the easiest things that you can attempt and spend your efforts on that can improve the appearance, more so over caffeine creams. But there's a lot of mixed opinions amongst dermatologists as to whether or not these are necessary. I heard a talk on body contouring from someone who does a lot of body contouring procedures and he swears by ca topical caffeine cream for his patients. He sells them a, a topical caffeine containing cream and he believes that it does make a, a modest difference and reduces the number of a body contouring treatments that they have to use and so it justifies the price point. But, uh, you know, that's just kind of his personal experience. And he says, hey, you know, patients will probably go out and buy something in the store, so you might as well sell them a cream that you have confidence in the ingredient might work and you see benefit and you believe in rather than them going out and buying, you know, <laughs> the Brazilian Boom Boom cream, for example, which does nothing. Uh, so that was kind of his rationale, but personally, I, you know, I, I don't, recommend people to do that. Um, I think just, you know, encourage them to maybe work on building up those muscle groups if they are able to work out. Um, so that's, that, you know, is a little bit more of a sustainable intervention for the people I see. Now I mentioned a risk with topical caffeine is the rebound redness thing. I've personally never seen a case of rebound worsening redness due to overuse of a caffeine cream, but it definitely is a theoretical risk. But a more concerning potential, although again, I've never actually seen it, risk with using topical caffeine to a widespread area, like the entire body on an ongoing basis is caffeine toxicity. Caffeine toxicity is real. Rarely, if ever, is it reported in people just drinking coffee, so I'm all good, but it definitely can happen. And the population where I see the most reports of it happening, it's most concerning, is in the bodybuilder group. Um, they have a culture in bodybuilding of consuming, I mean, I don't wanna generalize bodybuilders, but I know this is common in bodybuilding, of consuming um, these caffeine energy drinks plus a pre-workout, so they end up actually sometimes consuming too much caffeine. There's actually been reports of caffeine toxicity and death. Uh, majority of the cases 
are occurring in bodybuilders consuming too much caffeine. And so I'll bring that up because a lot of the, there are a lot of products marketed to people in fitness and bodybuilding that are like firming, tightening creams that have caffeine in them. And so I worry about this population who are already consuming a lot of supplements with caffeine at high, at, at a high dosage. And then they're probably putting this cream on to a more widespread area, you know, like all over their body, right? Before they go to compete or something, they want a firming look, they put them over the edge of way too much caffeine. But, you know, for the everyday person who maybe drinks a few cups of coffee a day and, you know, isn't consuming excessive amounts of energy drinks and maybe just applying it to a limited area, the thighs, the arms, it's fine. The other group who should exercise caution though is women who are pregnant. It's already recommended at baseline that you reduce your caffeine consumption to no more than 200 milligrams per day. That's roughly a 12 ounce cup of coffee. Um, and so the absorption of caffeine into the bloodstream through these products is low, but if you are like me and need that coffee, um, you definitely would want to just kind of back off on considering using a caffeine containing product during pregnancy, I would say. I mean, it just doesn't seem to be worth the risk. <laughs> it's not It's not the poison, it's the dose, right? Like how much are you actually consuming and putting all over your body? But exercise a lot more caution during pregnancy. Aside from that Korean product though, a lot of the caffeine creams, the cellulite firming creams on the market, they don't disclose the percentage of caffeine, which is kind of another thing that is hard to really gauge. Like, am I really getting much caffeine in this to have an effect or am I getting like an insane amount where I probably should be conservative with how much I use? Personally, I have really enjoyed using these hydrogel under eye patches. They're very cooling and very soothing. I, you know, I don't have under eye puffiness in the morning, but I just kind of enjoy the feeling there and they do add a little bit of hydration to my skin. Um, so that's nice. Um, but So I can't comment on how well they actually work for reducing puffiness. I personally don't cope with morning under eye puffiness. If you do, some things that you can modify that don't require a product are watch the salt in your diet. Eating a lot of processed salty foods definitely can contribute to fluid retention. And then at night, try and train yourself to sleep on your back and elevate your head a little bit, either with some extra pillows. By sleeping on your back with a little bit of head elevation, that will facilitate drainage of fluid from your head and neck back to your heart and reduce morning puffiness. I have that sleeping glow pillow that I love, um, and it actually um, is a at a height that really keeps the head elevated a little bit and kind of helps further facilitate that drainage of fluid. So that is something else that you can do that you know doesn't require a product. But the other thing to keep in mind if you have puffiness under your eyes is if you have seasonal allergies, that could be contributing as well. So that's everything I can tell you about caffeine and creams, kind of a short-term fix for under eye puffiness. Uh, maybe short-term fix for some redness, potentially, theoretically, can help with cellulite, but I'm not convinced. Um, you know, it's pretty innocuous aside from those rarer side effects of caffeine toxicity if you go on overboard and probably don't want to use it if you're pregnant. Um, so I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.